What's up, everybody? It is Patrick, and we're here with another episode of Mission Possible. We're joined by, as usual, our superintendent of the Martins Reunion Rescue Mission, Pastor Tim. And today we're going to go ahead and move forward as we look at some of the values that we base everything that we do um, on here at the Martinsburg Indian Rescue Mission. But first, we're going to do a quick summary in case you haven't listened to the first two episodes. So, Tim, go ahead. Yeah, we'll go over our mission. Our mission statement is uh, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. It's, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That is the rescue mission's main purpose. That is our main purpose that was written uh, back in 1960 when the mission was founded. Uh, and to this day, that is our main purpose. That's why the rescue mission exists. That's what we're supposed to be. Everything comes under that umbrella. From there we do. And everything we're going to talk about here comes under that umbrella. And, and let me just share real quick touch up here real quick with you on what we're not. Uh, we're not a uh, assisted nursing home. Uh, we're not assisted living. Uh, we're not a hospital. Um, it's very important for people to understand that um, because people have the mindset that our job is to house people um, and feed people. Yes, we do that and we do that very well. But we do not have the facility or the staff or the qualified staff mm -hmm. to do anything medical when anybody here. We can't have people here that need uh, severe medical attention or medical assistance. Uh, we, we don't have that kind of facility. Ours is open bay facilities where they, where, where they sleep. There's 15 uh, bunks to um, a room. Um, we can and the men that come here have to be able to uh, be able to take care of themselves, be able to work, be able to function in a normal way without any medical assistance or nursing assistance or uh, any kind of hospital assistance. We don't have hospital beds here. We don't have any of that kind of stuff. We have six staff, four that are full time, two that are part time, and we don't have and we're open 365 seven days a week. We serve three meals a day. We house the men here. Um, we, it, it's just a misconception that for many years, uh, people will be dropping people off our door in uh, anywhere from wheelchairs to folks that can't even get up out of the chair or in a situation where they can't even get out of a bed. Or, um, we've had it all dropped mm -hmm. out of our doors, folks. And we don't turn them away. We take them in, and then we have to spend a lot of time getting them folks into places that the place that dropped us off. Um, we had a person one time come from Cumberland Valley yep. Hospital. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they, they brought him in by taxi, sent him here. He showed up, dropped this humongous bag of prescription drugs, some very potent drugs. He couldn't even, couldn't even, well, you met the guy, yeah. but couldn't even function. Right. And then, mm -hmm. he's, then he's telling us, well, Here's my schedule of what you have to distribute to people. We don't distribute but pills. We don't do those kind of things. Not one person in this building is a trained medical professional. No, that's that, it's that simple. And yeah. and, and um, you're you're right, Tim. We, we it's not that we don't have a heart to want to help them. That's we, right. We can't help them. We're not equipped to help them. Right. We're mm -hmm. not equipped in any way to help anybody in a medical. Uh, need or assistance or a hospital mm -hmm. or they need their pills distributed to them or they need uh, medication distributed mm -hmm. to them shots all that kind of stuff we are not a medical uh, and again as Patrick said uh, we have compassion for these folks in fact we we keep them here and do the best we can until we can get that person placed in the proper place they need to be so reason why we're going over all this with you on video and and getting it out there is so when you talk to people this is who we are at the martinsburg union rescue mission this is what the rescue mission was founded on mm -hmm. it was founded on the principle of matthew 28 19 through 20 is to go ye therefore and make disciples uh, of all nations our job is to make disciples and then this is how we do it our second part of here is our vision to disciple men by equipping, educating, and empowering them to be Christ-like disciples 
Therefore, returning to the local church and community as productive members of society. Again, our job is to, as it says here, equip, educate, and empower. Equipping them is by, we have um, all kinds of um, programs here, which we're going to talk about. After this, we're going to break down mm -hmm. our different programs that we offer here at the Mission. And we're doing this video series so people can go online and they can educate and you can be educated on what we do here, what we offer here, what our purpose is, and how we accomplish that purpose. And educating, uh, equipping, and empowering is, is, is three, three E's that we also go by here. Because that goes back to Matthew 28, 19, mm -hmm. and 20. Equip is you go you therefore and make disciples. Make disciples is equipping men to follow Jesus. Equipping men to have the, the skills to go out into the, to the marketplace and be competitive, earn a living, go back into society, and be effective, Christ-like disciple in whatever job they take. And right now, we currently have like 14 men yep. working at different places full time, mm -hmm. and that is through our empower, uh, our employment program. That is one of our programs we offer here, and we'll talk more about that. But we have 14 men right now that stay in our A dorm, which is our half and half dorm. They Work full time, a full time job outside the mission. P and G, Cracker Barrel, Golden Corral, Max. Um, I Hol can't, Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn. We have Ruby Macy's, Tuesdays. Ruby Tuesdays, Ruby Tuesdays yep. and on the list goes. Mm -hmm. and these are men that work full time jobs. So again, the myth of well, if you if you if you have a job, you can't stay at the mission. Well, that's that's not true. That's a lie. That's a lie. These men stay here. They they work a full time job. And in return, they give four hours back to the mission a week. Right. We do not take men. We do not take money from men. We don't take rent. The, the, the part of this employment program is is for them to get a full time job, get back into society, get back into the job market, and earn up enough money to save for uh, security deposit and first month's rent. And then it can get out, and many have already done that within the year or so that I've been here. Oh well, just just yesterday, I, ha I had right. the joy of, of one of my good friends, and I and, and, and you put it on. Yes, it, right. it is on. If if you go to our website or our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, it, the, the Richard's video is on there. That's Richard right. was a an awesome young man. Came here through bad circumstances. I, we yeah. were kind of joking yesterday. You could not possibly have had a worse day yeah. than he had when he first came to us. He yeah, came here. Yeah, just break it. Just summarize. He he, he, he got he, shot in the foot by a girl he was seeing, and he's the one who ended up getting put in jail yeah. for somehow for it. So if you think you're having a bad day, yeah. here's a guy that gets but, shot in the foot by the girl that he's having an argument with, and instead of the girl going to jail, he goes to jail. Now and, that's a bad day. And um, <laughs> and he ended up going back home yesterday, and it was sad because he was such. So, we we just really loved this guy, and in the video, I don't I, watch it, but yeah. he says. I don't. We don't have anything like this in my town where I'm going back. He's from Tennessee. He says one of my goals when I get back down. He went back down. He instantly found a job making eighteen fifty an hour yeah. before he even got back on the bus. And he said, "I want to start something like this down there." That that's how affected I was by the program that you all put me through. That's right. And, and that's what we want to do. That's the whole point of what we do. And this here, and so. this is and this is why we're doing mm -hmm. these series of videos. So you can be uh, educated on what we offer here and break these myths that are out there. And mm -hmm. people I go and speak and, well, don't you do this? Don't you do that? No, no, we don't do that. Oh, well, I was told you did that. Oh, I, I, you know, and, and on and on and on it goes. No, this is what we do. Our vision is to disciple men by equipping, educating, and empowering them to be Christ-like disciples, therefore returning to the local church and community as productive members of society. And then our motto here is hope lives here. Hope. Because a lot of these men, as, as Richard in his testimony mm -hmm. will tell you, they came here broken. They came here lost. They came here broken for whatever reasons. Not that, not everybody, not every man that walks through this door comes through because of an addiction. Many of them, like Richard, come through because of circumstances, yeah. bad choices, uh, uh, bad influences, uh, bad a bad day. Yeah, as we said, you want to have a bad day. He had a bad day. Yep. <clears throat> and hope lives here. Comes out of Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a hope and a future. And here's what and and and, and here's the five values that we teach the men here. And we teach the men, we teach the staff, and this is what we 
We're going to spend all this year and next year just pumping into our guys. This is what we do. Everybody that walks through the door. We're Christ-centered. We believe that we first exist to glorify God and advance His kingdom through grace we received and through grace we share. That's our first value, Christ-centeredness. I'm not going to read all Philippians 1.19 uh, 1, through 21, but there's scripture verse there. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 talks about Christ-centeredness. Our second value. And this is where we're picking it up. That was kind of the recap. So this is where right. we're kind of picking up now. So we have five values that mm -hmm. we teach here. Our first value is Christ-centeredness. Our mm -hmm. second value is servant leadership. And this is a key value. Of, well, they're all key values, but servant leadership. And let me let me just share. Let me stop and take a second here because I, I can get so far ahead <laughs> that I can forget. Every one of these values, there's five of them. There's Christ-centeredness, servant leadership, transformation, uh, stewardship, and excellence. You also that are watching this video, I would challenge you to take these five values and apply them to your life. Absolutely. To your life. They're scriptural. And we're going to give you scriptures that you can use for each one of these values. They're scriptural. They're in the scripture over and over and again. Jesus talks about them. The Bible talks about them over and over and over again. I challenge you to take these five. Just take one scripture verse at a time. Take 30 days for each scripture verse. Apply it to your lives. And before you know it, you'll be living these five values, these five biblical values every day of your life. And you will see the change in your life, but the people around you, they will see the change and they will see more Jesus than ever before in your life. So I, 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 I challenge you to take that on because we do that here. And here's servant leadership. We have highly value and intentionally serve each other, our guests and our ministry partners, leading by following Christ's example. Our leader, uh, servant leadership is, as we said earlier, we get people dropped at our doors every day that don't uh, that, that, that can't be ministered to here at, at, the, at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission by what we have to offer. But we don't shun them and throw them out the door. We still serve them. We don't have case workers here. We don't have case managers. It's Patrick and I, and that's it. Uh, I average 60 to 70 hours a week. Patrick averages at least that and then some every week. And if you think I'm making that up, I would, I, I would love for you to follow me just one week. We put that many hours in in a week. We have two ladies in the store, Brenda and uh, Tina. Brenda's part-time store clerk, Tina's full-time store uh, manager. Then we have um, Sharon, who's uh, uh, office manager, and then we have Zoe, my assistant, and she's full-time. So that's what we have here, folks. So when we teach servant leadership and somebody comes in that has severe medical issues or all kinds of stuff, we have to get on the phone. We have to contact all kinds of agencies. And sometimes we have to call the hospital back yep. and say, why did, you know, from Cumberland County, why did you send some in a taxi? So yep. you know that was expensive. Three, what, three hours or something? Yep. To come mm -hmm. all the way down here and this guy gets out of the taxi and he, he even said to us, why am I here? Right. I mean, they threw him in the taxi and they sent him down here and, and he's even saying, why am I here? Thank God for the um, Martinsburg uh, Fire Department. Oh, absolutely. They yes. came, those mm -hmm. guys came and the paramedics came. They took him and then they got him a place that they, they worked it out where they mm -hmm. got him that where he needed to be. And I mean, sometimes we have to turn to the police and turn to the fire department. They're our last option because these guys are so busy that they had to come and help us. In fact, the two paramedics when the guy told them where he was from, the two paramedics said, how did you get here? Why did you even come exactly. here? Exactly. And the guy said, well, the hospital told me to get in this taxi and that I was coming to this mission. Mm -hmm. And that is just unbelievable, you know, to send them down. And we're not a medical facility. In fact, even the paramedics said, you guys ain't a medical facility. And we said, yeah. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> but we still serve the people that, uh -huh. that nobody else wants to serve, that others will just drop at our door. But we also teach our men because we are, our men are involved in that don't work outside of the mission. Mm -hmm. They're involved in working every day in our, um, in our um, work therapy program. That's another program we'll talk about that the mission offers. And this helps men get um, prepared to go back into the workforce, to get jobs. In fact, one of the things we're doing with the education part is um, we're um, starting a literacy lab as of uh, next week. Yep, next week. Mm -hmm. We'll be starting a, a literacy lab because for, we're learning that as we take the men through our discipleship track, 
the reading, writing, and comprehension is hard. So we have uh, two ladies coming in that are going to run our literacy lab. We've had donations come in through uh, various uh, organizations and grants to get the computers we need and all the stuff we need. And so we're going to start, I think four of them are going to be working on their GEDs. Yep. And see, this is what we do. So in the meantime, those that are not working outside, they work in our food service. Uh, they work also housekeeping, uh, warehouse. They work the front desk. They work the sorting room, and they work the thrift store. All six of these places where they work are actual real jobs in the real world. Right. There's is a training time, a work therapy time, and they work and they learn. And then so when they go and apply for a job, they can put it on their resume that they're actually doing this and they have experience. And then we'll do the literacy lab. We'll help them in the other part. But we teach them servant leadership. And the scripture verses that we work with them on is Matthew 20, 26. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. You know, and that's key. Patrick and I, I mean, <clears throat> I could, as superintendent, I do everything. I just got done doing the food runs. Okay. I Last week you were in the truck unloading the truck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there, there, there's nothing. I mean, if I'm not setting the example, how can I ask the men to serve? And how we talk to people, how we welcome people, how we greet people, how we serve people. Our food service is way better than it used to be. I mean, I, we're teaching the men to take pride because as the Bible says, whatever you do, do it on to the Lord. Right. So when you're serving somebody, you're looking in the eyes of Jesus. And that's another scripture verse that we use here. Uh, in Philippians 2, 3 through 4, it says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Let, let, let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Go ahead and share with that when, you're, when we're talking with the guys out here. Yeah, I mean, well, one of the things that I, I really impress upon the guys when I meet with them, when I talk to them, when we have department meetings and things along those lines is um, pride is one of the big issues that we deal with here. Pride and anger, they kind of go oh, hand yeah. in hand, but, oh, but, yeah. pro but normally the anger stems from pride. And, and I always say, and I always go back to, um, I always like to take things back to the Bible because that's where we should be taking things back to. And I always Always go back to what does Peter say when Jesus says, "I'm going to wash your feet." Well, no, Lord, I'm never going to let you do that. I mean, he he has this idea that this is beneath him, and, and that's what I look tell the guys. Nothing we do here is beneath you. Yeah. Uh, if I ask you to, hey, this toilet is is dirty and needs scrubbed. I've done that before. You've done that before. Every one of us here is not only has done it before, but is willing to do it if we have to chip in and do it as well. well and it's it's so important that we uh, uh, help our guys understand that what they're doing is part of that discipleship. When people see them working with a gentle attitude with a friendly attitude, doing the things that they have to do with a smile on their face, that comes across as, well, why are you so happy when you're doing this? And it gives them an opportunity to say, because I'm doing this for the Lord. Well, and, huh? and, and another example is like when we do get folks that have medical conditions mm -hmm. and they're here for some time. Some are here for a couple months until sure. we can find them a place to go. Mm -hmm. um, we have to look after those folks. Sure. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had one older gentleman here um, for a while. I forget how many, a month and a half. And he... Uh, would wet in his pants. Mm -hmm. And our guys would take him. I mean, he'd stand up and his pants were soaked. He was old. He had uh, whatever medical issue he had that he was doing that. He wasn't doing anything on purpose. It's just the way it was for him. Mm -hmm. And he needed to be, again, in a medical assistant facility, not the Barnesburg Union Rescue Mission. Our guys would take him, take him in the shower, help him undress because he was very... Fragile, off balance, off balance yeah. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, remember, these are our guys down there. And, and, and I know before I came here, they'd never done anything like this. <laughs> and, and these are our guys going in. They take them. They, uh, and then they walk out. They give him soap and everything. He soaps himself up and does, takes a shower. And then we take his clothes and we take him immediately to the uh, wash machine, wash his clothes. We immediately go to the thrift store and get him cl new clothes, bring the new clothes over, uh, have him set in there, help him get dressed. Okay, 
And again, our people are not trained, not certified to do any of this stuff, but we're doing it out of the, the, what we teach of servanthood because, you know, these guys understand. They're not looking down as we're serving this person. They're, they're, they're ministering to the person and helping this person. And we've done that many, many well, times. Well, I think the, the, the best example that, for my mind, and this, it was almost about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that, um, is when Lenny and Matt came yeah. to our doors. It, 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 last year. Yeah, and, and, and the February. first question when you saw them, there was downpouring, freezing cold rain. It wasn't quite snow, but it was freezing cold rain. And, and the city and you, was shut down that day. Yeah. And you came and asked me, who are these two? And I was like, my, my typical answer, mm -hmm, you know, and, uh, and, and through a year, uh, you wouldn't recognize them no. if, compared to what they were before. Well, Lenny, um, you know, were actually hearing aids. I mean, we were a year ago, we, we, if we would have said, you might be able to hear a year from now, you know, it, it, amazing. Um, so, so, and it's all through help through the community as well because and Matthew who's working Ma Matthew is working now yeah, yes. I mean, no. Matthew yeah if you just saw Matthew um, and what Matthew's been through mm -hmm. and uh, I mean <clears throat> there again is what we do here at the Martin and that servant leadership again we have five principles that we teach five values Christ-centeredness which we already shared and went over last uh, video this video servant leadership we're going to talk about transformation here in a little bit in another video. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, stewardship, stewardship and then, and then excellence. Yep. And again, I, I, I challenge you to take all five of these values that are biblical, that are in the Bible. We even gave you some scriptures. There's more scriptures than just these two. We can yes. go on forever. But take these scripture verses and take these values and apply them to your life. And I guarantee you. I guarantee you, if you take each, and it's five months, take Christ-centeredness the first month, uh, servant leadership the second month, and transformation, then stewardship, and then excellence. Five months, within five months, your life is gonna be different. Your walk with the Lord is gonna be closer. And when people look at you, they're gonna see more Jesus than they ever did before in your life. That's gonna point them to the only one we know that can save everybody, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, we're going to wrap this time up. Patrick's going to tell you how you can donate because because of your donations, because of your blessings, we we were able to get the um, the literacy lab up and going. Because we we folks we depend on your financial. I mean, it, it, your prayers and your finances. Your financial donations are essential to keep this ministry going every every day. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and we will have, once it gets fully up and going, we will have pictures of the oh, literacy yes. lab so you can see. And we'll see have the ladies in here, too. We'll absolutely, the yeah. Um, so, but if you are interested in donating, um, visit our website, martinsburgunionrescuemission.com. There's a link at the top of every page. You can do a one-time donation or set up a recurring donation, a monthly donation off of there. Also, you can find our needs list. There's pictures all over the site that say the specific things that we need if we're really looking for something. Um, follow the website, follow the Facebook page, follow the Instagram page. Those are the big main things that we use in order to let you know our immediate needs and the, and the immediate things that we're looking for. All of those links can be found right off the website. If you're interested in volunteering as well, we are always looking for volunteers. Front desk, Front kitchen. Front desk, kitchen, thrift store. Those yes. are the three main areas we're looking for volunteers for. If you have a large group, if you're, if you're part of a civic organization, your company wants to come in. We had an insurance company come in a few weeks yes. ago that was awesome to come in. Um, and we, uh, we actually had a um, uh, baseball team come yes. in this past Sunday with our, our, our Weiss Brothers representative. There you the go. coaches a baseball team and he bought, bought um, essentially it appeared to be the whole league in, not just the one team. Um, but it, it, was, it was fun watching those kids. So, you know, we can take all of those volunteers. The, the form is there um, as well. And if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to give me a call. Our number will be here on the bottom of the screen. And Sharon uh, and Patrick, this, everything goes through Sharon with the yes. volunteers and then Patrick does this stuff with the front desk and mm -hmm. stuff. 
Not me. Not me, folks. Just do not contact him for any of this. <laughs> for the volunteer. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you've got money to give and you want me to come and pick it up Absolutely. from you, that's the guy. They, yes. they call me. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. I know his schedule is filling up for the year, yeah. but if you are interested in Pastor Tim coming to your church and talking about or the civic mission group or, your or, your, or your organization. Because I'm, I'm speaking to a lot of civic groups and organizations. I can do it during the week. I can mm-hmm. do it in the morning. Morning, afternoon, uh, Sunday morning, absolutely. Whenever we were, we were lucky enough to be able to attend a uh, chamber of commerce breakfast last week, which right. is very, which was very nice. And t- so, uh, yes, you can contact us for that too if you're interested in getting a little bit more, um, you know, group time with, with, with uh, Pastor Tim. You can do that as well. So, uh, the, all the information is on the website. Yes, mm-hmm. Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission We're going to go ahead and take a quick break here, um, and because this will be the end of video one, but. Tomorrow, video two of this will be, be popping up. We're going to be looking at transformation next. So we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back with you tomorrow. Yes, and thank, thank you very much. Mm-hmm.